Coming up, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, Democratic Congressman Hank Johnson of Georgia joins us now. And Congressman, you actually were an impeachment manager back in 2010 during the impeachment trial of a federal judge down in Louisiana. My understanding is you worked with Adam Schiff on that impeachment. Can you take us inside a little bit of what it means to be a manager, the roles and responsibilities, a little bit behind the scenes of just how that works? Well, I worked with... Um Adam Schiff and also Zoe Lofgren was a part of that ah. uh, impeachment management team. So you've got two experienced impeachment managers um, who will be leading the effort along with Jerry Nadler, uh, chair of the Judiciary Committee, a man who is steeped in the Constitution, a lawyer. And um, so what it entails is basically everyone being in full command of the facts of the case. In the Porteous uh, case, it was similar to the, um, to the Trump case because there were no criminal charges filed against Judge Porteous. And um, Judge Porteous uh, argued that the offenses that he was alleged to have or that he was convicted of um, committing, which had to do with financial improprieties as a judge, financial misconduct, he argued that those issues did not rise to the level of uh, impeachable offenses. So pretty similar to the same argument that um, that uh, Mr. Trump is making it's and his attorneys. It's one thing to remove a judge. It's another thing to remove the president of the United States, though. Well, the Senate has already seen fit to remove, uh, to convict and remove a sitting judge for offenses that were not crimes, mm -hmm. that he was not charged with crimes. So the precedent is there. And also the, um, the fact is that uh, Judge Porteous also tried to argue that he went to trial to protect the judiciary. And uh, President Trump is going to try to say that uh, you cannot hear from important witnesses because of executive privilege, which means that there are communications with him are confidential, mm -hmm. but there's actually no reason other than confidentiality that undergirds uh, that claim. And so I'm expecting that uh, if the Senate does have a trial, John Bolton's testimony will be front and center, as it should be. And uh, there might be an assertion of a claim of executive privilege and it'll be uh, interesting to see how uh, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, handles it. I agree. So I found it interesting that the president chose not to include any of your House colleagues on the Republican side on his defense team. Obviously, you saw the way that House Republicans defended the president in your hearings. You uh, tangled with Matt Gates in a fairly memorable exchange there. Do you expect a more serious legal defense in the Senate trial than what we saw in the House? Well, I think his announcement the other day of his uh, lawyers added to his team, uh, all-star Fox uh, News contributors, uh, they will entertain his, um, his base. They are there to present his side of the case basically to his base so that his base can then lean on the senators to do what Trump wants them to do as opposed to be being fair and impartial, doing fair and impartial justice to the facts that come about. And I'm hopeful that the American people, particularly those who reside in um, states that have Republican senators, will actually get out on the phones, get out into the streets in front of their offices, emails, and demand that those senators uh, adhere to the oath that they took to render impartial justice to the facts of this case. And they can't do that unless they get some more facts. Sure. Congressman, I want to turn from the trial to the trail here a little bit. You have not announced a endorsement in the presidential race. Uh, perhaps you'd like to make some news on our broadcast this morning, but what are you looking for in the Democratic nominee to be president? Well, first, I'm looking forward to the attention of the nation shifting to Georgia and Super Tuesday, the rest of the uh, Super Tuesday states. I'm looking forward to the candidates who remain in the race visiting uh, the 4th District of Georgia, uh, talking to the citizens who, uh, who are Democrats and who they seek support from. 
And I'm looking forward to the citizens of the 4th District making a great decision. <laughs> a very political answer. Let me ask you this. The former Vice President Joe Biden has, I think, 11 endorsements from Congressional Black Caucus members. Ever since uh, Senators Harris and Booker dropped out, I don't think there's another candidate left in the field who has more than one. Why is the former Vice President so strong in the African American community? Well, first of all, uh, people don't have to worry about where Joe Biden is coming from. They know that he's a kind, honest, and decent individual. They know that he's a public servant who serves the people. They know that he understands the niceties of uh, domestic affairs. They understand that he is well steeped in foreign affairs and national security. And they um, they understand that the, niche, the nation does need uh, a steady hand uh, to come in and uh, pick up the pieces from uh, the debacle that is the Donald Trump presidency. Congressman Hank Johnson, tipping your endorsement cards ever so slightly this morning. Thank you for coming on with us.